Hey guys, Miller the MK here. I played a couple games in the T71 last night as well as the Chaffee, and I had this really solid game on Fisherman's Bay. Thought I'd break it down for the community. I love light tanks, I love playing them, everything about them, but it seems to be something that, uh, by and large, people have trouble with. So, just looking to post this and give some people some free help and see if it maybe helps them out on their trip to play on light tanks. So, here we go. Fisherman's Bay, tier 8 match, not bad matchmaker, especially for this thing. I just go to do a middle spot initially, just like always. Uh, T71 is fast enough to be able to do it pretty safely. I actually get a little lazy here. I think this is my second game in it, third game in it in the night. And you see I almost get shot because I miss uh, mistime my drift there. But it still works out. I get behind the building in safety. And here we go. Match starts. I looked at Flex Norse for the T71, but he ends up getting picked up. No problem there. Alright, let's see if that... Oh, still lagging. Alright, well, nothing really important happened during that lag section. <laughs> so now I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to Flex West. My platoon mate was saying that he got shot. Um, and I'm just going to look to set up maybe, you know, G1, F1... Um, but first I'm going to stop here and try to get the, I think I was setting up for the, was it the 69 or the T21? I think it was the T21, who was a one shot. Um, so I just kind of wait for him. And this is funny, you can see I'm used to the chaffy gun, because I bowl the trigger and the shells are just going wide. They're, they're just not even hitting. <laughs> so, pretty horrible shooting. I should have just let it aim in, but I didn't. Uh, in any event, it works out. And I go ahead and pick up the T21 anyway. I think about going mid and end up just switching back to the west like I was saying. Okay, so at this point, a little bit of the theory here of what's going on. I don't want to go 8-9 line because we don't have any eyes there and it's likely it's going to be overwhelmed. So I'm not interested in spotting the 8-9 line. I'm not going to suicide for Artie. The game's not even close to over and if I want to win, I need to stay alive. Um, I can't run up the 1-2. There's guys here and I'm not interested in trying to take the mid away from a type in T69. I'm just going to get abused there. So, uh, that's a bad gig. T44 does a great job. Just uh, barely barely pops my turret, and I reset a reload here. Because there's no reason for me to hang out with only four shells in the clip when I've got a 20 sec reload. So, I back off, just like normal here. My platoon mate goes down. Um, kind of stinks. And I'm looking to get shots here on the 1-2 again, because if I can clear the 1-2, I can maybe get up into B1, A1, I can get the Arty out, I can draw their forces back and allow all of our real tanks to be able to pressure up properly. So that's kind of the theory here that's going on in my head. Um, the gist of it is, is the 1-2 line just takes forever. IS pokes and RNG is, you know, just really kind to me right there. Both, both shots pen. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. Um, I'm not going to poke for the 44, simply because I'd just be eating a shell for no point. I clip into the IS, reload again, and back off. So at this point, I have 1200 damage, uh, not bad for a T71, pretty reasonable EXP there. At the same time, we just went down a tank, uh, not good. I don't really want to rush the IS at the moment, I would like him to poke so I can get him out. Um, there's the Black Prince. I realize, okay, here's my chance to get him out. Get, I mean, get pretty lucky there, honestly, but with five other shells, I think I'd have pinned anyway, so not, not too excited about that RNG. Um, I see the 69. Full health. That's a problem. Uh, I still can't push mid then. I'd like our type to go get the IS out, but. I'm more concerned about the 69 here in the middle. So you see, is I pop him twice, and then he goes blind. Kind of interestingly, I thought I'd clipped into him at least with this, with those two shots right there, not the last one. But you'll see a little bit later that's not the case, which screws me up just a little bit um, and just forces us forces me to adapt really. But that's that's key here, guys. See, as I'm flexing east, I don't want to push one two because I don't want to get shot by the IS. So instead, I'm going right here. I can kind of support mid. If the 69 pokes, I can deal damage. 
but really key is you're playing a light tank. Don't pin yourself down in one side of the map. There's no point to it. Uh, if I'd have just stayed sitting in H1, we would have lost this game. So we're down 6 to 8. Oh, nice. 7 to 8. And we've got to get some more kills. We've got to get some more advantage. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe I'm just going to run straight for the IS anyway. I'm concerned that we're just going to get rolled. Our guys in the 1 2 are going to go down. Oh, and I see the proto. Okay, that's no good. So I abort and turn around. And I don't stop at the rock. Really, really key here, guys. Doing something like stopping at the rock would have been really stupid because as the proto got closer, he'd have proxied me and I'd either been stuck or he'd have just poked on me twice and killed me. So not not the smart move and thankfully I, I, I don't do that. Um, now I've got AT15 sides because I repositioned and didn't pin myself down. And you'll see here this is really, uh, this ends up being really clutch for us. So the E2 kind of shields one shot. I let this last one aim in properly just like I ought to. And now I'm up to 22, 25 damage, and I've, I've only taken one shot. So, so far, so good. Um, I would like to flex to the east now, because I see most of their forces are now congregated in the west side, except for this AT-15. Problem being with that, I don't really want to get lit, so I just run the red line. Um, at this point, I actually end up stopping, because I realize I'm going to bush warrior it, be a ninja, um, and fight it that way, and I completely whiff two clutch shots on the E2 and then switch to the high value target really clear here as well uh, key excuse me switch to the high value target always so just like that I now have 3k damage and I've killed their tank that would have been impossible for me to kill from the front uh, at this point I think I'm also loading a heat clip because I only have 5 APCR left so right there had a chance at a high value target took it and ended up getting a brew so you know I've already I'd already pecked him what five, four times, three times, um, and I, I just got a little bit lucky there. So here we go, Proto pops up, and I'm interested in getting the Proto out, but I'm really not going to pen him effectively with gold, so I think about sitting on top there, because my camo value is, is great, um, and let's say, before it got nerfed, I think it was 21-21, I think, uh, 2020 maybe, exceptional. Post nerf, I don't really know, but I don't really care. I don't feel like light tanks got hurt that badly, like a lot of guys do. So anyway, I decide I'm just going to grab a bush here. Uh, what is this? J J7, and I'm going to wait. As a light tank, my highest bonus per class is camo. It's not damage. It's not even speed, necessarily, because there's a lot of fast mediums in the game now. Um, but it's camo. So I sit here knowing that I'm not going to get lit through this bush pretty much no matter what. See the IS? Unfortunately, he gets under cover first, even though I try to rotate the hole as well, which is a little bit better mechanics than I usually show. <laughs> I usually just turn the turret. Um, I just wait right here, and then I end up, okay, I'm going to back up a little bit behind the bush. That way, for sure, I won't get lit. Now I realize got to get him relit. need to get the IS out, and this bothers me. I get lit, and I go ahead and bounce three shots virtually in a row on that IS. That's really frustrating. Heat got nerfed horribly. Tanks like the T-71 with 220 heat pen get hurt pretty badly. So anyway, but it's not over yet because see the Super Pershing came back and maybe I could have done it without him, but this way for sure. So I'm loaded and I know they're not looking my way and I'm like, okay, good. Amen. Oops. Went the wrong way on the speed dial. And there we go, first shot pecks him. Now here's the thing, the proto's worried about the super pershing, so I'm just going to sit in the back and I'm going to farm this guy down. There's another one, and perfect. And there we go, just like that, without the proto, or without the super pershing self, with any damage, I won base, simply by using him as a distraction and my tank's innate uh, clip and depression. So keep that in mind, as you play a light tank or whatever, you need to be able to utilize your strengths, and that's why I went to the back of the hill like that. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit, because the 69 doesn't get lit for a little while. Now I'm expecting him... Actually, I'm going to pause real quick. I'm expecting the T69 right in there, in E6. He's not there. Uh, pro tip, he doesn't end up going there. And my platoon mate actually says, I bet he goes city. So it's kind of funny. Um... I don't. I think Nano is like a 53, 54% player, and the way I was thinking how I'd play the 69 was way different than the 69's thought process. Um, 
he clips out. He actually beats up our Tiger P pretty badly. But the funny thing is, him going City means he's going to die. I'm not quite sure what he was thinking, because as soon as he committed to City, he wasn't going to be able to get out. Mm. But anyway, I mean, I'm not complaining that he made a bad move. Uh, just kind of interesting commentary there. So here we go. I try to do a pretty good job of not running anything over. Uh, above average job for me. Usually I hit trees and bushes or whatever. And I'm looking to hunt Artie. There's three minutes left. I really don't want to draw this match. I'm also going a little bit quicker now because I don't want this file to be like full 15 minutes or something. And they put somebody on our cap. Um, it's only one. Let me see if I can reverse it to speed one. Yeah, there we go. Uh, it's not, not two guys on our cap, thankfully. And I'm thinking, okay, the grill was last seen here. I really doubt it's the grill on our cap. Although I realize it's a possibility. So think about going back, and then I realize if I go back, there's a reasonable chance that we won't be able to... Um, the Super Persian solo might not cap it out. And that's... I want... Basically, I want the Radley Walters at this point. So I picked that guy up. And now I just kind of count on this T71 speed. And you can get away with this in a light tank. Also note, already misses me, but I have the APCR clip loading, which is just a little bit faster. Uh, shell velocity, I like firing APCR out of this more. Um, our Super Pershing's on cap. Because I, I killed the Artie that could have spotted him. Basically, it's safe, sort of, if I can get a reset. Um, and I've got eight kills at this point. So here's actually where I get a little sloppy, I'll be honest. I should have taken a wider route. Now, I really thought that the Artie would not be ready. And you'll see he is. And so I should have veered right around, what is this, the IS carcass there. Now look at this. So I take the shot on the move. And he is just spot on. So kudos to the Artie. The thing is, I've got all my repair kits and I've got a full clip. So it's not a problem. And GG Radley Walters. Shout out to the Artie. <laughs> for actually being ready. All said and done, this is, frankly, exceptional T71 play. Uh, hopefully beneficial for you guys as you watch it and kind of think through maybe what you would have done in this situation compared to what I or another T71 aficionado would have done. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to, to share this really fun Radley Walters. I think I got a Confederate um, Top Gun Radley Walters. I don't know if I got a sniper or not. Anyway, just if it was, uh, yeah, hope it's useful for you guys. Have a good one.